Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Gru. And for the episode today for Gru, we got we got a very special guest, a great guest, and his name is Jonathan Sto Stodert. And I'm really looking forward to talking to him. And it's coming up next, so let's get ready and let's get ready to rock and roll, baby. Like a wiretap. Oh. <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, welcome, welcome to Gru, and thanks so much for for being a guest. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, see, I don't, I don't uh, hear the music any anymore. <laughs> I so <laughs> it turns out it was like a random autoplay when I opened my browser. So you okay. started playing this. But it had a really cool sax. I don't know if you heard it. It was like, woo! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice, nice. So, yeah, wait, what do you have going on in the pictures behind you? Oh, it's, it's like a bunch of, of, of wrestling stuff and like yeah. an old picture of me in the prom. And <laughs> wait, where are you a wrestler? Uh, well, I, I was, but like they're, they're actually like wrestling pictures of, of wrestlers that I met, that I, that I watched as a kid and stuff that's that's very cool yeah like i got sting back there and randy macho man savage and yep. wow and foley and hulk hogan and <laughs> that is that is a you don't happen to have one with uh with the rock do you Oh no, I, I I I never met him. Like I never got a picture with him or nothing. Like that like trip to have I know, one. Right? Johnson. Oh, oh my god, that would be crazy to meet meet him. I, I was happy I got to meet Randy Randy Savage though, because he was always like one of one of my all my all time greatest and it was really cool to meet him. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Immediately, especially that picture on the far left on the bottom. Um, so, well, not, not your left, like, oh. or sorry, your left. So your left shoulder, uh, <laughs> I think that's Foley, right? Yeah, I think that's Foley. Yeah. 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 That one's Foley. <laughs> I'm an 80s baby. So a lot of the, like the wrestling in the middle, I was like, I know these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> My childhood. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I mean, yeah, like you got Hogan and and Savage, like they they were that era. I yeah. mean, there was no bigger two wrestlers than Macho Man and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, and and all the video games, like the greatest video games, were the oh wrestling. God, games. yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, play them as a kid, like the old wrestling games? Yeah, dude, I I love the Undertaker. Nice, nice. Dude, this is so cool. So cool. Oh <laughs> uh, well, hey man. So what's up? How are you? Not not bad, not bad. What about you? Things things are should I bleep myself? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you can you can crazy. <laughs> I mean there's like this this show isn't intended for kids like if they watch it that's uh them, they're probably sneaking it but it's not it's not intended for kids fair enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no thing, things are things are so crazy right now um with uh i've got my hands in so many things that all have this very powerful equal pull on each other or at least on me in a couple different directions and the, the Venn diagram kind of overlaps a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, it's kind of wild. Nice. Hey, at least, at least you're, you're busy, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> that is the running jokes with me are what state am I in right now? And then how many hours of sleep have I gotten? <laughs> so I feel like a father of a newborn. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I, I mean, with with your your lack of sleep, you you look very 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 upbeat and energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> There's a lot of this happening underneath the comments carrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like 
<laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you know, I, you talk to actors and stuff, and, you know, even, even for your line of work as well, it's like, you know, we, we got to... I think that's part of it. You got to figure out how to show up even when you don't feel like showing up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Everything from being a parent to performing, entertaining, even like being a waiter, you know? Yeah. Who wants to be, there are not a lot of people who want to be like professional waiters, but oh. you got to you gotta put on that face and go to work or you'll get fired. Oh, I know. I know. Like my, my, my like real job, my, regular job I, I i have to always go and work and smile on people's face and i'm like Ugh. yeah I'm like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is this is like the fun the fun part like i wish this this was like my 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 job where i got paid decent and and i would be really happy then but unfortunately this is a hobby for now until I get paid if I ever get paid for this <laughs> well but that's that's how you know you're doing the right thing now mm -hmm. if you would do it uh, then that's how you know you're in the right place you're right you're right about that at least that's what I tell myself also <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah hey you know you have to you have to pay the bills like even though you don't like go into the place you have to smile and pay the bills right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we've, we've all done some weird weird shit i think like being an adult no one tells you as a kid you're like oh yeah i want to be an astronaut of course <laughs> I want to be an actor. Ah. And then you uh, find yourself on the corner at 2 a.m. being like, I got to pay my bills. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's real. Being an adult is real. It is. It is. It's sad, sad but true, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, you you actually um, you you started out with the soaps, right? You were you were in um, the young the young and and rest restless. Yeah. Uh, well, so technically, I I don't I don't know how far back you want to go, but like in terms of this group or this section, because this is my second time in LA, uh, starting like seven years ago. Okay. And then five years ago, um, I was in a really bad relationship that totally destroyed me when I moved here. Oh. And I lost myself completely. And uh, I was, when that ended, I decided, okay, I was going to pull a Queen of England and I was going to marry the throne. And because, and you know that reference or... Are you, do you know that reference? No, I don't. So queen of England, this whole thing, um, it, it wasn't customary for there to be a queen without the king. And so they kept pressuring her to marry a king, to find a suitable king and all this guy. And she was like, no, I, like, I am the ruler. I am the one. And so she threw a wedding for herself to marry the throne. Oh my God, really? And I, there's this very interesting trend, I think, for some of the most like the bios of, of successful people and things like that and of where they marry their career or they marry what they're doing. And you just kind of, you have to make that your compass. You have to make that your, you know, your number one or right underneath God or, you know, whatever, wherever it is, it's gotta be pretty high up there, just about as important as oxygen. Yeah. And, um, so I decided I would pull a queen of England, married acting. And then shortly after I, I actually kind of got my start doing a lot of commercials. Oh, like, wow, nice. Incredible number of commercials. Some that I hope the world will never see. <laughs> I'm sure they'll resurface sometime because every now and then I'm on YouTube and it's like um, <laughs> commercials of stars before and it's like Chris Pratt. Did you see his old commercial? No, I never did. Oh, Chris no. Pratt. He did this commercial and it's awesome. It was before, um, before he started getting into TV and stuff. And it's okay. like him and 
I don't know, Snuggies and PJs, and he's got a lightsaber, and he's fighting Darth Vader for a candy <laughs> bar or something. <laughs> I forget what it is. Um, but I, I've got stuff kind of like that. And, okay. <laughs> but yeah, did commercials, and then, and then I was like, all right, it's time to upgrade from commercials, and then landed um, an under five with the Young and the Restless. And then oh, that nice. turned into uh, a cool recurring role, role for the next like three years. Wow, okay. It's, it's been a pretty fun journey every time they call me back to do a couple episodes here and there. So it's been fun. Nice, nice. And I I, I only heard a lot about being on set for soaps. Like that's isn't that like a five day a week job, like ten to twelve hour days and you have to learn a whole bunch of lines and so depends <laughs> it depends on the role. Okay. I will say one of the interesting things was that mine started as an under five mm -hmm. and, and you know, that little tease for me at the time was, Oh, I want to get contracted. I want to get, con I want, like, I want to be recurring. And cause once it's done, like once the under five is done, you leave set, <clears throat> which is a whole other experience um, to be on CBS, <clears throat> to be on the lot, the way that they do it is just so on point and so professional and polished. It's, it's wild. I'd, I'd never experienced anything like it. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I was so nervous before I got there. Like, couldn't eat for two days nervous. Damn. Uh, because of some of the things that you've heard where they send you the whole, <clears throat> and it's just for under five. I didn't even have crazy lines at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I exactly. had five lines, and I didn't eat for two days. <laughs> <laughs> five lines <laughs> like uh, come on <laughs> um but <clears throat> i will say this in my defense <laughs> if you have a whole monologue you know <laughs> you can get away with not being emotionally present for a couple lines if you have five lines and you're not emotionally present for one of them you are beep. <laughs> like it is <laughs> You've got to be so locked in because every single word counts. Oh. Um, so I put a lot of pressure on myself for those five. But, but I will say the blessing in disguise is that the, that under five, of course, uh, like a month or two later, they called me back and I became a non-contracted recurring character. Nice. Part of a flashback series for 1970 when the kids were exploring their adult issues, but how they kind of a this is us thing where how did it start as children? And so what I didn't realize was that this flexibility of YNR calling me every mm -hmm. six months to shoot a couple episodes, it gave me the freedom and ability to start working on movies. And it gave me the ability to start expanding into this whole other space of entertainment instead of going in every single day and being a serial, uh, like a serial contracted player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, in the last two years of, of, I don't know, I think I've done over 20 projects and it's been pretty wild. And I couldn't have done that if I was on set every single day for Young and the Restless. That's true, that's true. Cause that being on the soap takes up a lot of time. Yeah, <clears throat> well, and it's not like I can, you know, if I book a movie for a month, but I'm on set every single day at CBS, like I can't, I can't do it. So, and there are people, I've talked to some of the actors there where it's like they, you know, they get really comfortable and there, there's a beautiful security in that. Um, but I, I'm actually really happy with how things turned out because I, I, I love stepping into the film space. Oh yeah. And that's just been such a great journey so far. Nice, nice, nice. And um, one one of the films you you've done a, a horror film. You you play a, a a cop in in a horror film called White White Terror, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's funny. Out of all of <laughs> out of all of them, that's the one uh, that you pick. <laughs> oh no, I got more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, 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 do you want to hear the story behind it or yeah sure <laughs> okay so 
<laughs> um, I did this movie in Iceland called Angels Never Cry. <clears throat> Such a wild experience to be, uh, to film over there. Great people and everything was wonderful. And the director of that one ended up also having this one several months later. Oh, okay. And she called me originally from that. Now this is what's interesting or fun about the backstory of this. <clears throat> is that in Angels Never Cry, um, I play this kind of serial killer. Um, it's a much darker role. And I go after this girl who's married and her husband is a guy named Matt Monroe. And so he and I, he ends up kind of killing me. Like we end up having some fight scenes and stuff <laughs> in Angels Never Cry. So then he takes me out in the movie in White Terror, or it was like White Room before, it's gone through some working titles and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up casting me as the cop and him as the robber. <laughs> and so I end up getting my on-screen revenge and I pump him full of lead. I shoot him a couple times. <laughs> nice, nice, I like that. And so there's a fun little backstory of like Easter eggs with some of the repeat characters when you develop these set families. Um, so that's kind of a fun thing about that. Okay, okay. And, um, and uh, another horror film, uh, you, uh, as you could tell, I'm a big horror fan. So uh, <laughs> another horror film, I see you worked with, with someone that I absolutely love. Like you worked with, with D, D Wallace on set for uh, uh, Wait to yeah. Dawn. <clears throat> I How love D. Yeah, how was it with D? Man, she is she is a presence. She is a force. Like she is <laughs> she is so wonderful. Um the not only just like on set her her professionalism, um, but also her her mothering instincts and care and understanding, but then also the like no tolerance. I've been doing this for a long time. So <laughs> talk to me, get your shit together and let's do this. But then, you know, she kind of lack of a better expression. She, she kind of slaps you around a little bit and then, but you kind of like it. So, <laughs> um, I mean, Dia is just such a wonderful, wonderful woman. And, um, and her daughter was actually on the movie as well. Nice. And, uh, and we have people like, you know Josh Server and Caitlin, and he played my sister, and um, and and just the cast was phenomenal, and Courtney Gaines, uh, especially for horror. I mean, he's iconic in the horror. Yeah, world. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like there were Bruce Davidson. Like there were just some. It, it was phenomenal. Such a great experience, and I I can't wait. That movie it keeps kind of getting to the point where it's about to get released, but mm -hmm. just at least from what I hear from production distribution keeps kind of fighting um, about where it's going to get released specifically on what platform, but it, it cleaned up in, uh, in the festival and the horror world and all oh, of, of course, all of that. Like we've got, and yeah, the laurels are insane when it comes to that movie. It's wonderful. I mean, this, if, if this film is shown at like film fests and horror cons and horror fests, when the, the horror fans see that D. Wallace is in this film, they're they're gonna go absolutely crazy and want to see it because she's like a horror icon in in the horror world. Yeah, yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's great, man. <clears throat> Every now and then we just go like, e -t <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she's just she has such a great sense of humor. Like we would dance on set, all of nice. us. It was an ensemble cast, so most of the movie takes place in a single trailer. She plays my mom in this. And so all of us together, it, it just bonded so fast because every single scene, like 90% of the movie takes, or 80% of the movie takes place in a trailer um, where, you know, where even if it's the scene about them, I'm mm -hmm. still in the background someplace because the space is so small. So we just, we all got to know each other um just yeah and and still i was texting with that i call them uh we call them our atd family awake the dawn family 
Right, right. Uh, that's our set family, and we still text every day. Nice. Yeah. What did What did you like 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 best about being on set for that film? For Wait the Dawn. Yeah. That's a good question. Sorry, <laughs> that was a very pregnant pause. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, I always lean. I always lean towards the people. Okay. <laughs> I always lean towards the people. Um, who like who we work with the the problems that we have to overcome to make a movie happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then the set families after. And and just yeah, because otherwise it's kind of like speed making movies in today's world is almost like speed dating, <laughs> where you know it's, it's Tinder from for movies, and you get on set, you know, like you swipe, you swipe, and you're like, oh, I want to be in that movie. It's a match, woohoo! And then you get on set, you have your date, and it's zero to sixty, and then <laughs> the movie's over, and then you're like. Um, are they gonna call? Do we get to do this again? <laughs> and so, uh, so I would say it's always about the people for me. I love the community that that forms on set. It's everything. Nice. And um, how did how did you wind up getting the role as as Wilt as Wilt as William in the horror movie Voices? Ah, the voices. <laughs> And, uh, do you hear voices in your head at all? No, I'm a joke. <laughs> Mom! Where's the meatloaf? <laughs> Sorry. Will Ferrell throwback. Had to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the voice was that's a fun that was a fun story shoots in Alabama or shot in Alabama of course and we you're asking how did I get that role mm -hmm. it's kind of a kind of a fun story behind that um I where was I I think I had I just gotten back from Iceland oh, and wow. I was in well, from uh, shooting Angels Never Cry, shooting yeah. that one. And then there were like five months where I left one, I left, a, I was living in this house in Los Feliz, um, kind of like a core group of us. And then we all kind of scattered after our two year lease ended where uh, there was a director friend of ours who went over to um, like Cleveland, Ohio. Another one went back to Virginia. Another one went back um, doing this, other, moved in with his girlfriend. So I was like, well, I'm SOL. Um, so I'm gonna, I guess I'll, I found this great place in WeHo, but all my stuff coming from a big, like I was, I was disheveled. There was yeah. no reason. And like, if you looked at me, you wouldn't have thought I was an actor. You would have thought that I've been living out of my car for a while, which it <laughs> felt like I had been my hair. Like I had, I don't even remember last time I had a haircut when I first auditioned for the voices. Yeah. And when I auditioned for it, I was like, you know, it's like, well, now, now they're not gonna cast me. Cause I, uh, yeah, like, let me be the male lead of your movie. <laughs> like, no, there was, there was, <laughs> you know, it's like, I've already lost before I went in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That of course is the irony. Um, <laughs> but, but here's the fun part. Apparently I went in, I did my thing. And I tried telling casting, I was like, which Judy, such a, a wonderful woman, she casted Judy Boulay. And, and I was like, after the first audition, um, just so you know, if he wants me to cut my hair, shave, like I don't normally look like a piece of, but I like, I can clean up, you know, top notch and like I'll go on a diet, it'll be great. This is just a bad time for me, <clears throat> but this is, I can do this. And, and, she, and she's like, She's like, don't worry about it. I thought you did great, honey. And I'm sure she said that to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Such a lovely soul. And they called me back and I was like, wow. And I ended up, I ended up doing like six or seven auditions. Damn. That, yeah, went through like the initial, um, actually, I, I think it was like four or five auditions. And then it was like five or six or seven uh, chemistry reads. 
for the Lily, <clears throat> uh, the woman who played Lily. And mm-hmm. they tried casting everything out of LA to have that rapport. And then the irony, of course, of that is that they cast a girl that we didn't read together, nor did we ever meet until the first day of set. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So all the chemistry reads like there was, there was no chemistry <laughs> until we actually met. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> here's the overarching interesting story or uh, backstory to how and why my disheveledness didn't matter. And it's because Lily is blind in the movie. Oh. So when, when the director was listening to the auditions, he, he didn't watch them. He listened to them. And he put himself in Lily's shoes and he said, if, if I was a woman <clears throat> who was blind, looks wouldn't matter to me. I'm going for someone who has you know, that, that texture, that comfort, that compassion, something in their voice that makes me feel safe Mm -hmm. amongst other things, but, and loved and everything. I need someone who can, who has that vocal presence. And so he, until we started doing like the final chemistry reads, he didn't even know what I looked like. Really? Yeah. Uh, Which is just such a fascinating, I mean, I, yeah. uh, And thank goodness. And thank goodness. I was, I was one, you know, <laughs> I was one like hitting my head against the wall, bump on my forehead away from being the elephant man. Like it was, can you imagine if he's like, we want you. And I'm like, hi guys. <laughs> like, it just wouldn't, um, it would have been like, okay, maybe let's find somebody with a voice and, you know, <laughs> somebody who doesn't look like one of the spirits coming after her. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah it's it's just kind of an interesting story how how and why people cast and create the movies that they do and, and their process wow yes wow okay I, that's crazy he didn't even know how you look like that's insane now his producer you know, <laughs> and i'm sure behind closed doors in the beginning the producer was like, maybe you should watch this guy before you say you like his voice. <laughs> and Nathaniel, he goes by Sif, but Sif was like, no, 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 I'm not gonna watch it. And I'm sure Mike was like, um, <laughs> nudge, nudge, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this other really cute guy that I also think would be perfect. <laughs> He's like tall and dashing. <laughs> This guy looks like he crawled out of a trailer. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, it all worked out and thank goodness. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So for for anyone who hasn't heard of the film, can can you give like a little story on what on what the film is is about? Yeah. Um I will say I wish I had a a more succinct and better answer. describing what this movie is about only because it is it is not your normal horror movie Mm -hmm. um it's it has this really the easiest way i can describe it is this kind of like international horror where it has the suspense it has the thrill um but it it's not like freddie the 13th it's not it's not Michael. It's not Halloween. It's not slasher. And then you round the corner and it's Carmen Electra running through a, a field of sprinklers, you know, scream reference. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> a scary movie reference. Sorry. Um, it's not that kind of film. This has the whole story is more drama and it's about the family, but then there are these two very other powerful stories from uh, children trafficking, mm-hmm. and then this unique ability that my wife has um, when she gets pregnant of being able to hear uh, spirits. And then not only that, she, when she gets pregnant, there's a certain period of time in which she has the unique ability to be able to pick which spirit is going to be 
her baby, our baby. Like what soul is going to go into that baby? Wow. <clears throat> it is, it's, it's scary and edgy, but dramatic it plays on some very real uh, concepts of, about humanity and also supernatural. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's fun, but there's a, there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening in the project. It, yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And how was the, the cast and crew like on set? Oh, they're amazing. <clears throat> they're, they were just like, they're just such the, the warmest people. I mean, it's, it's Alabama hospitality, it, you know, it's so nice. Uh, but they don't, I, of course, none of them, none of them had accents, but they were, they were, well, they were like one or two, but okay. everyone was so nice and just warm and welcoming. Um, I have a, I have a fun theory about this, uh, after being on set, um, to say there are, there are only a couple people who really set the tone mm -hmm. for how that operates. Uh, that's the lead actors. So if they're divas, then everyone else is like, oh, what? oh my God, we gotta, do, we gotta, do, what? Because that actor is gonna be like, <clears throat> yeah, I want my coffee at 130 degrees <laughs> and, and I want you to remove all the W's from my M&M bowl. And they're like, oh my God, we gotta do, or I walk. And it, you know, so the diva on set sets the tone. <laughs> Uh, the director sets the tone, and so um, and then kind of like the lead producer or executive producer, they set mm -hmm. the tone. Um, if they're cool, then everyone else is cool. Okay, okay. Like if the if the director is really cool and everything, then he sets the tone for the AD to be cool, and they're the gatekeepers for making sure we stay on track. Everyone else is cool as long as those like three to four components. Uh, like a really solid just friendly or not like so uh, I don't because I don't want to put down anybody who's kind of like <laughs> firm when they're on set you know because you got to do what you got to do to pull off the movie and to make it happen so I get it um, but I will say the the casting crew for this were just amazing and oh, they set God. such a beautiful tone for everyone to have a family and we still talk constantly as well I have my oh, wow I have my voices family group group chat too. See, go see that. It seems like the horror films you you've been on, you 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 set group group text chats. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're my set families. Exactly. Especially for location, you know, you're living in another place for a couple of weeks, a month mm -hmm. or so. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. These, this is my family. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I I mean I I know this film is 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 like no you know the the voice the voices uh, so uh, I don't know if if you could say or not but what what scene did you like best from the movie I don't know if you could give too much away or I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are people going to be watching this and listening to it? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So like skip skip over that right? <laughs> oh, so I shouldn't stand up because I'm in boxers. <laughs> I'm totally doing the quarantine party thing right now. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I mean, some 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 viewers might actually like that. You never know. <laughs> hey, let's boost the ratings. It worked for Janet Jackson back in the day. Wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I like I like the tension and practical effects, and they did a lot of practical effects on this. So I love I love that kind of stuff. Okay. A really disturbing scene where she has a nightmare, and without giving too much away, this nightmare is mm, this nightmare <laughs> is just disturbing, yeah. and. Uh, it's just disturbing. And, and that's, that's all I can say. Man, woman, it doesn't matter. And I'm asleep during it. So it's not disturbing, like for my character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite scenes that we did in the movie because uh, they would joke that I was actually falling asleep while they were setting up 
the shot because she and I are laying in bed together. Oh, wow. So, and I would actually fall asleep and then she wakes up from the nightmare and I have to, so I would actually, I would actually fall asleep because it's like hour 12 um, <laughs> and this really intense, creepy guy comes crawling into the room and like, ooh, and it's just, and it's so disturbing and she wakes up in a panic and, and it wakes me up and then I have to do the scene. Wow. Um, I would, you know, fake sleeping for, try fake sleeping for 30 minutes and see if you don't fall asleep. Right, right, exactly. You're, if, if your eyes are shut for that long period of time, you're gonna fall asleep. Oh, you're gone, you're gone. Like acting is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but with all due respect, it's like obviously if I was blind, like that wouldn't be a problem. I could live in the dark and I would be totally cool. But no, I mean, I fall asleep doing the five minutes of asana at the end of a yoga session. Like, <laughs> I'm screwed doing a scene like this. But, <laughs> but I did it and it was good. <laughs> so that's, one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite scenes. And then near the end of the movie, where some of the spirits come out and and we have to like run through the house and getting cornered by this well, just crazy, just crazy stuff. I don't want to give anything away, but it's, yeah. just, it's just fun. Nice, yeah. nice. Was, was there any funny or cool behind the scenes stories that happened on set while you were filming? Well, the whole thing was fun and cool. <laughs> okay. I mean, and you can tell like, even just the banter and everything that we're doing back and forth, like this was every day. Yeah. Around set. And so I can't say there was anything that stuck out specifically, but we just, okay. we, just we just had an incredible time. We just, all, we just all had so much fun, laughed, and we would all get together and grab dinner after each day and just hang out um, and then talk about the following day and how we felt, uh, you know, about some of the shots and things that we did. It was just a great experience. They were, they were wonderful. Nice, nice. And uh, was was this film shown in in like horror film film fests and stuff? So it was supposed to release during quarantine. Oh, okay. <laughs> and obviously, quarantine changed everything, <clears throat> and uh, shut down all the theaters and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so I don't know exactly what Sith ended up doing, at least in terms of, in terms of who saw it, okay. what it was committed to. I'm pretty sure based off of like the distribution and how everything happened, um, I'm pretty sure it didn't go to okay. festivals. Oh, please don't quote me on that, <laughs> even though this is recorded. Uh, so I, but we did get some attention beforehand and everything. And then of course we got domestic theatrical release, um, international distribution, all that kind of stuff. So, but I don't, I don't exactly remember what markets and everything that, that we played with beforehand to test market response. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's a shame, like how, how, how quarantine, cause that's how a film basically gets seen, gets known is going through like the film festivals and, and quarantine killed that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's uh it was a trip. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, at least, at least you, you still got like streaming because like with film fest, not, not active as, as much now, like a, a lot of films are, are, are going through apps and streaming and all that stuff. So, I mean, at least you still get to see it, right? <laughs> well, yeah, when we heard that, <clears throat> that it was getting picked up full theatrical release and everything, we were, I mean, it, it's just so fun. And I know mm -hmm. it's select theaters and all this kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just cool. It, it's amazing, like the whole world has changed and AMC oh, and people, now people have every single movie coming out available on, on all these distribution platforms, Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, Apple, Facebook, yeah. they're all generating content now. Disney, yeah, everyone's fighting, you know, everyone's attention. And That's 
yeah, that experience disappeared long enough. The experience of going to the theaters used to be such oh, so much fun. So much fun. Such a good at getting your hands buttery and oily from the popcorn and eating the candy that you don't get at home. Yeah. Or at least you shouldn't get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And going with your friends and sitting in the chair or like IMAX and, you know, the, the sensory experience and mm-hmm. you know, IPIC and um, it was such a thing. Now people have that at home where it's, it, it don't feel it, the same. They have reclining chairs and they're like, yep, I'm going <clears> to <throat> put on Netflix. I'll put it on with my, uh, like they're, they're now like, 4K wild 600 inch projector screen across the sky. And they're like, <laughs> no, the technology is insane now. It is, it is. It's crazy. But like, I, no matter what size television you have, and if you have surround sound, it, 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 it's still nothing compares to going to the theater, like that experience sitting in the dark theater and, big screen and uh, i mean there's just something different about the feeling that i i love going during like the summertime you go in like an ice cold movie movie theater and sit there and watch a movie oh my god <laughs> sneaking in a beverage or two yeah 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 i'm not gonna snap yeah. on that <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> you know order order a soda and and put a little enhancement in the soda Yep. Go to the bathroom before the movie starts. You know. Yeah, exactly. I am wearing pants, so I'm not going total commando, but like hiding something here. Again, <laughs> I'm not saying I've done this. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, not not that we've done these things, just stuff that we heard that people do. <laughs> I'm not advocating that you do any of this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, I will say, if you if you flip this question that I'm about to ask you on me, I can't tell you. I don't remember. But do you remember the last movie you saw in the theater? The the last one I saw. Yeah. Ooh, uh, well, I mean, it was before the world went into a big sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my God. You know, I can't even remember the last one I saw. I, it had to be like, I think it was like the last Avengers film or, or the last, last Spider-Man. It was one of them. Well, I was going to say, I actually think I just had a flash. I think that was mine too. Well, Endgame. the Avengers. Yeah. That, that, that probably was. Yeah. I think, Avengers Endgame and IMAX and that was my last Mm -hmm. wow I know isn't that crazy Marvel Brothers (laughs) (laughs) that's I wonder how many for how many people that was their last movie probably probably mostly everyone because I I mean one of the highest grossing films yeah yeah and it's it's sad because the movie theater where I live at in Philly, they shut down forever. So I have to like travel outside of Philly now if I want to see a movie. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I I never would have thought that they would shut down a movie theater. Like that was our like only one and, and they shut it down. And I was like, oh, come on, really? Now I have to go to Jersey. <laughs> and it's actually open there? Yeah. Yeah. They they got they got a few theaters out in Jersey and everything's open. Like um well, you know, it's not full, but like uh they got a couple theaters and then a couple a couple drive ins too. Well the drive ins are cool. It is cool they brought some of the drive ins back. Mm-hmm. They're able to do that to go full old school. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So at least, at least, at least Jersey's still like doing doing their people right. Philly isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I do Philly though. 
man. How about Philly? Yeah, well, like you came, you you visited Philly and stuff before, or or probably shot here, right? Well, uh, I haven't actually shot in Philly, but my uh, my sister went to University of the Arts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I visited her a bunch because I went to a school out in New Hampshire. So she and I used to do road trips back and forth for the holidays. Um, and we would just like drive across. I had a Mazda back then. So we used to throw everything in the trunk and just, or we'd take her car and go back. And, and it was just great. But Philly was wonderful. And then my brother went to Temple University. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice. And then out there, he ended up matching. So they ended up staying in a suburb just outside. And uh, he's still in Pennsylvania, but the, I just love Philly. There's, some, there's just something so cool. I don't, I don't know, it's the history of the architecture and, mm-hmm. and the, like even the bad parts, I think are just so historically amazing. Um, and there's just such a cool energy of feeling them. Like I, oh I, yeah. I love it there. Just, just don't walk in in the bad parts when the sun goes down <laughs> yeah <clears throat> that's when you you're like all right robbers pick your weapon i got mace a gun a baton like you know like selling watches you're like how do you want to go down today <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your exactly. you don't have this jacket to arm yourself like <laughs> marvel superhero like batman right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you you you've done you've done horror stuff like ha- have you ever been to any horror horror cons horror conventions no but i want to so badly so much fun oh like oh i i i grew up doing uh you know some of the dance or sorry not dance some of the um you know the renaissance fair stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i was that weird kid who worked the renaissance fair nice nice that looks fun oh the ren fair back when i was a kid was phenomenal it like it was amazing it, it was this fun creative space like renaissance period you know you're grabbing like turkey legs and oh like, that's oh, the best part about it <laughs> and you're just like immersed in this other place and we used to go you know watching people juggle and mm. you know it's like it's a traveling Vegas. It's the traveling Shakespearean show. You know, it, it was. It was just. I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, so dressing up and doing all that. Uh, Comic Con. Like I, I want to do something. Where I get to do, like Comic Con and dress up and do stuff like oh, that. Like yeah. Monster wear. I have a lot of friends that I've been doing a lot of movies, like where I have to be a person. Hmm but I've been making this list of special effects and makeup artists and people who do the prosthetics and creature kind of stuff. Cause I, I, I love them. I absolutely love it. Um, and then I get to go to like Comic-Con and like the horror festivals and, or uh, not just the horror festivals, but like horror con. And like yeah, I, yeah, I, exactly. Oh, I want to really bad. <clears throat> My name yeah. is not big enough yet, but it will be soon where I get to go to things like that. Well, you know, like horror horror fans. I mean, speaking speaking as a horror fan myself and running a horror site, like um, horror horror fans are very loyal. And like you got you got you got some horror films, especially your newest one, Voices. So you, you know, if you if anyone tries to to book you for a horror con you might you might be shocked on 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 like the people to come to see you like you you might have a line and stuff because because of the movie i would be there i'd be there in a heartbeat <clears throat> and i will say there's i've got a, a handful more horror movies that are on the verge of coming out okay and even one that i helped uh i produced and started as well nice and, uh sir from the voices is also taking over uh, some of the distribution and um, he, we showed him the rough cause we did it. We did it bare bones and it's the Stephen King style. We shot it in Maine. Um, and it's about these two military guys who kind of get, they go out on this mission and get hunted down by this monster. Ooh. <laughs> and then, 
ends up uh, the monster ends up. Ah, yeah, I'll say it. The monster ends up crawling inside me. Oh wow! Like gutting me and then crawling inside of me, and then I bring it home to my family. Oh my god, it sounds amazing. <laughs> well, not uh, not amazing for your family. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well. well. Uh, so and it's so it's kind of like the thing, right? This parasite kind of creature, but there's some other elements to it that make it a little more, uh, more mindfuckery, kind of like okay. it plays in the Stephen King world, and it, it it's just and PTSD and some other elements and guilt and man how that manifests and and then bringing home the problems with us after work. Wow. But, yeah. so that, that movie, uh, we showed Sith a version of it, and he was like, "This is this is gonna be phenomenal." He's like, "I just want to be a part of this," and so he's helping us with uh, some of the the buttoning up, tightening it, distribution, everything. So we may be going into the same distribution platform, and then that'll have a global release in the coming months as well. Damn. Um, okay. But there there are a handful of projects like ah uh, yeah yeah. Now now you see like that. That film is probably going to be the film that makes the horror fans want to see at horror cons now because you got a beast living inside of you. <laughs> oh, we got some scenes for that one too. Because <laughs> in the voices, I'm like a supportive husband, and I'm like, "Oh, Lily, like, what are you talking about?" And she's, you know, going through everything, and she's yeah. everything, and it's more of a visual external of spirits and things and. You know, but it's like bloody and eerie. Like it's so mm -hmm. eerie to see these dead spirits, the way that they died, trying to communicate or come after her. And then, uh, but then this one is also, this on the contrast is the horror actually happens to us. Exactly, yeah. So faces getting ripped off, <laughs> intestines getting pulled out, um, putting people on like skins, like that kind of thing becomes a, a different different kind of style it's just oh. it's just different but still wonderful damn you're 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 definitely gonna draw the horror crowd for this <laughs> <laughs> and like what are some of your what are some horror films you love to watch oh. um oh man all right so when i was a kid um like Lord of the Flies and oh yeah yeah uh, Candyman oh that was that was creepy yeah <laughs> that that fucked me up as a kid like I could <laughs> I could do a lot of horror uh -huh. and I I, I I was so I'm the youngest of four so I got exposed to a lot of things really early and I was like you know what I can handle anything <laughs> and then for one of my birthdays and I don't remember I was like early preteen or something and I was like let's watch Candyman and. Ugh. I like. <laughs> yeah, that's not a that's not a movie to watch as a kid. <laughs> yeah, I uh, couldn't sleep for a minute. I'm sure. Um, but no, there there are some like, you know, you some of the the greats now and in, like Insidious and mm -hmm. uh, Haunting Hill. Like there are just some wonderful shit. Like The Ring. I was yeah. so fascinated by The Ring yeah. for like the concept of filmmaking and and then of course we mentioned i mentioned it earlier but like the thing mm -hmm. and the practical effects with how they did certain like there are there is the there are certain films that just stand out because they were so uh you know they're they're the timeless movies but then they're the movies that are just so impactful for the time cutting edge for the time oh definitely and um but yeah, I mean, those are, and then psychological horrors versus like, you know, even the Freddy, like the classic slashers and Halloween and Freddy and all oh, that. Yeah. Stuff. Like, I, so I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know how to boil it down to just a basic, like, this is my favorite. I, mm -hmm. I don't have way too many incredible artists that have made movies that have scared the living shit out of me uh that deserve an homage even midsummer which was just like yeah that was nuts yeah such a slow burn mm -hmm. that gets inside your head and then 
like fucks you up by the end of it where you don't even know who you are and what you re-examine <laughs> sure, life issues sure. right that's so you're not true. even scared you're not scared of like someone breaking in you're just scared of being alive yeah. and being yeah. yourself yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> so, um, oh, there are some, it, yeah, that's, I don't know. There, okay. there are just, there are too many. Oh, no, I know. Like, well, uh, one, one film you mentioned is uh, I, a film I love, Ring. Like, could you picture, like, just sitting down watching television and this creepy girl's coming out of your TV? Like, I, she wouldn't even have to kill me. I would have a heart attack. <laughs> right can you imagine like this is your almost take the concept of the animation monster thing yeah. where the, but take it as like a serial killer where she's like i have one job i need to go kill this person and she crawls out of the tv and then but she's so good at being fucking terrifying yeah. that you die before she gets there and she's like well now the fun's out of it like, <laughs> so disappointing to be a serial killer and have these like abilities to come out of a, a TV VHS. Right? I, yeah, yeah, she she wouldn't have to do nothing to me. I would, I would be I'll, I'll be done. Like yeah. this creepy girl oh. crawling out of a TV with that creepy crawl that she does. I'm like, nah. Yeah, you're like, dead. out of the TV. <laughs> like that the ring it was so legendary mm -hmm. that style of filmmaking of the the quick cuts mm -hmm. like the concept of course is scary how it's implemented is what changes the game with horror today you know it's the single cut like midsummer where they don't they don't cut when they when she um the the two elders jump off the cliff mm -hmm. they don't look away and back with Jaws and some of this other stuff and Psycho, I mean, legendary, like, but even those are psychological thriller. It's not like hardcore horror, but yeah, yeah. Um, these, the scale of some of this stuff, I mean, even in some of the old Halloweens and stuff, you know, they'd raise the knife and then you would just see like, ah! exactly, and then, exactly. And then the going down and blood squirting out, but you're not actually seeing them. exactly. So your imagination tears you apart. Mm -hmm. Now they're doing practical effects, single cuts, and it's like you can't, you're watching somebody's skin melt on TV. You're watching the cuts in such a beautifully orchestrated, choreographed way that those visuals burn into your, your retinas later and then the movie's over and you walk home and then you look at your TV and you're like, <laughs> you know and then there's that it, you you change the channel to that one static <laughs> after you watch the ring and you're like honey honey did you put on that did did it turn it okay just did you hit the button or did it turn on accidentally <laughs> or is this the ring did you watch a fucking vhs what did the <laughs> like, I, I would probably be running out of the house at the Television turned to a static channel after watching that movie. I'll be like, "Yeah, I'm running." <laughs> yeah, that'll mess you up. That's that's intense. But yeah, the ring was. Whoo. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, what do you like doing for fun when you aren't involved in acting? Um, I got my hands in kind of a bunch of things. A lot of music. A lot of music. Working on. Uh, working on a couple albums right now uh, with my singer, Taylor Watson. And uh, we're doing some very cool projects, really like edgy stuff. And uh, that's the most I can say at the moment. Okay. Uh, about that, but it's taking up a lot of time. We've been in and out of the studio. I'm filming two movies at the moment. So every day that I'm not on set or some of the days that I get wrapped early, I go straight to the studio and-, oh, nice. and work on laying down tracks and creating kind of the essence and getting ready for our release, which we're hoping to be in about a month or two. Okay, that, sweet. Yeah, so that'll be really cool. But other than that, like, I've done it all to survive. You know, it's the life of an actor. So <laughs> I have a photography company. Um, I love teaching. 
So I have a teaching company. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. And just like the teaching and mentoring is specifically around acting, but specifically geared towards uh, helping people kind of change that one thing to go from, it's not necessarily about your talent, like talent, of course, plays a part, but this is a business and so many, edu- like so much emphasis on acting is about developing the talent and the skill. Mm-hmm. And there are some very, very talented people who will knock your socks off, but you will never see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know the business and they don't know the marketing and they don't know what they're doing. And so there is, they're like, you don't want to be the most talented person in the graveyard um, and have nobody know who you are, or what your name is, if that's why you're here. Yeah, that's true. So I like teaching. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like having a part in inspiring people to, to be able to start over and close that gap because I've had to start over so many times in my life. Um, I've had to start over just a lot. And I've come out of it every time. And nobody's, nobody's handed me a, like a, a golden thing. My family's not in the business. In fact, they're the furthest yeah. thing from it. And uh, I'm at a very interesting place of creating like my own momentum and certain kinds of success. And I really hope obviously this uh, with all these movies and everything um, and with you and helping like developing these relationships and getting out there that it's going to help put me on a different kind of platform. Um, like being of service is really important to me and having a hand in helping people believe that more is possible for what and where they are, mm-hmm. and what they currently think. Uh, that's really powerful for me. So I spent, a, I spent a lot of time teaching, mentoring and being involved in them. Oh, wow. Okay. But yeah. Otherwise it's like, and then, uh, Peter Calenteris Agency is a company, a talent agency that um, I, I have a hand in the development oh. of that. So there are, there are a lot of different things um, that I'm kind of shaping. Yeah, definitely. You got, you got, you got a lot of stuff that's going on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I, could, I could see why you don't sleep much now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole sleep thing. Yeah, sleep. What? What sleep? <laughs> so I'm working on it though. Yeah. Um, I'll sleep later. <laughs> is, uh, is there any? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I know the films you have out, but like, is there is there any any film that you want to push your plug or any anything coming out that you want to talk about? I feel like if I were to narrow it down, it would be an insult to anyone that I didn't mention. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, other than the one that I'm producing, which I told you about, so I have mm-hmm. to do a plug for that. Uh, but that's called Bone Cold. And look for that in theaters near you this summer, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, I don't know when that'll fully get released, but over the next coming months, and uh, that's going to be a very cool project. I think that movie's going to do really well. Um, fingers crossed. Famous last words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but other than that, there, I'm I'm working on two movies right now, and and um, not not in like a boasting place, but it's it'll be my eighth movie. When I'm done filming in the middle of May, it'll be my eighth movie wrapping since January. Damn. Okay let alone uh, anything that didn't get released in quarantine. Which yeah, happened. yeah. So there are a lot of really cool things coming out um, on some of like the horror side, uh, even for some fun love story side. I'm up for this one in Montana, which would be pretty cool where it's not horror, but there is <laughs> some jarring, jarring stuff that happens, uh, which I would really love to get. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly. Just keep your eye for the audience. Keep your eyes out because there's there's some cool beep coming. Nice. Okay. Not very selective with my 
beeps. I've said the f bomb like <laughs> six times without beeping myself, and I apologize. <laughs> no, like I said, like, you know, it's not a show that's meant for kids, and like if they if they do watch it, they're they're definitely sneaking it. <laughs> 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 and, um, where can fans find find you at like your socials and website if you have one and yeah of course uh instagram is john stoddard official but it's j-o-n oh. not j-o-h-n no offense to the johns out there <laughs> um, but i am a jonathan so short that's john uh but john stoddard official is instagram I have a website that uh, I'm going to be revamping just because of this flux of work and everything that I've been doing. So I have to redo all of my marketing and branding and everything. But if mm-hmm. you do want to stay in touch, um, John Stoddard, Jonathan Stoddard or John Stoddard.com, IMDB, of course. Otherwise, uh, I mean, you can follow like the teaching company because I'm pretty active on that every week. And um, yeah, but there's, there's going to be, there's just going to be some cool stuff. I would say those are probably the, the, the number one platform would be Instagram, if not uh, the teaching company. And uh, what, where, where can they find that, that one at the, te- the teaching yeah, company? The teaching company is called the Resourceful Actor. And so we're pretty active on the Instagram for that. So the Resourceful Actor, uh, it's just that, just the Resourceful Actor. And then every week we do kind of like um, a checking in live feed every Sunday. Oh, wow. And, uh, we bring on special guests and we just talk about the industry. We talk about life. We talk about things going on. Um, so it's kind of a, a fun way to check in with the community and, and create an anchor point. And yeah, yeah. I would say those are, those are probably the two best ways. Otherwise, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Things are about to get super crazy. And so I don't know if I'm going to be coming out more into the world or if I'm going to start like hiding under a rock. <laughs> so, I don't know. Instagram, those companies, it's going to be good. Nice. Uh, yeah, we'll see, see what happens with everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll, I, I, I don't, I don't want to take too much more of your time up. I know I already took a lot of it up. <laughs> <laughs> but thank thank you again for for taking time out of your night and coming on the show and and taking time out of your sleep too <laughs> <laughs> thank you no thank you i i appreciate your time as well and and yeah just playing with me this is awesome thank you definitely all right buddy uh have yourself a, a good night and rest of the week let's do it have a good night um let me know how uh, this this turns out. Oh, definitely. You gotta send me a link. Definitely, definitely will. <laughs> and enjoy Philly. Yeah. yeah. In New Jersey. Yeah. When you go to the theaters. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cross over to Jersey if I want to go to the theaters. Yeah. <laughs> no offensive people in Jersey, of course. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> no, no, no. Jersey is awesome. Jersey. <laughs> It yeah, is. it's yeah. good. Hey, that that's where they that's where they filmed Jason at. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, awesome, man. Well, have a good night. Thank you very much. All right, buddy. You too. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. Okay.